When the sun's shining the brightest, the sun's beating down the hardest, that's when this story takes place. And it takes place in a really unexpected place. An unexpected location. It takes place in Samaria. And now back in that first century, Jews and Samaritans, they didn't like each other. They at one time were all one big family. They were all part of the kingdom of Israel. But they had a split. They had a falling out. And so if you were a Jewish person and you were trying to get back home, you would not travel through Samaria. You would walk. You would do whatever it took to not set foot on Samaritan ground and to not have to talk to a Samaritan. So you would go miles and miles and miles out of your way just so you wouldn't have to talk to these unspeakable people. But Jesus, Jesus is all about reconciliation. Jesus is all about making old things new. Jesus is all about breaking the rules of this culture. And so instead of going around Samaria, he goes right through it. And he sits down at the well at noon. And as he's sitting down at the well, there's some, this woman. Now, first of all, it's bad enough that Jesus is going to start talking to a Samaritan. But a Samaritan woman, you just don't talk. Men and women do not talk together in public unless you're married. This does not happen. This is culturally, this is scandalous. But Jesus doesn't care about that. He sits down with this woman says, will you give me something to drink? And she says, why are you, basically, why are you talking to me? You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. And by the way, you don't even have anything to get out of this. You don't have anything to, 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 to get water out of this well from. Like, why are you talking to me? And Jesus says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now he does, it's the same thing he just did. He talks about being born again to Nicodemus. He talks about living water to this woman. And living water, she understood it as running water. The best, cleanest water was a water from a stream. Not some water that's been sitting stagnant in a well for who knows how long. If you could find living water, that's pretty valuable. And so when he says, I want you to get, I want to give you living water. She's thinking, I'm going to get water from a stream? Like, this is awesome. How do I get this living water? And he says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Whatever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman says, sir, give me this water so that I won't go get thirsty and have to keep coming back to draw water. And so she's excited. She's interested. She's different than Nicodemus. Nicodemus was curious. He was willing to come and have a conversation but when Jesus threw, throws a curveball at him, he says, I, how, I don't get it. I don't understand. This woman's curious. Jesus throws a curveball. He says, go get your husband and come back. But he knows something. He knows that she, she says, I don't have a husband. And she knows that you're right when you say you have no husband. In fact, is you've had five husbands. And the man you have now is not your husband. What you just said is quite true. Now you would think like if she's interested, if she's seeking, that Jesus would say, great, you're excited about me? Well, let me tell you about what I'm all about. No, he wants to see. He wants to see how much passion she has. He wants to see how much that fire is burning in her heart. And she says, what do I, basically, what do I have to lose? You got me. I'm a person that everybody talks about behind their back. I'm a person that nobody has a plan for, nobody has a future for, nobody has any expectations for, but Jesus is different. Jesus has expectation. Jesus has sees in her what nobody else sees in this woman. And they have this conversation about worship. And eventually he says, he reveals to her that he is the chosen one, he's the Messiah, that he is God in human form. And that changes her life. She can't keep it to herself. She goes out to her village and will tell anybody who will listen to her about this good news. About the one who has come. About the one who knows everything. Who knows every dark detail about her. But it says, no, but come on. I know about you. I know all the stuff. You don't have to hide from me. But I'll, I'm going to take you anywhere. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing on this earth. And she spreads the message. She's the first one in, this, in, in the gospel. She's the first one before any of Jesus' disciples go out and do ministry. This person, this person who was thrown off and tossed aside, who people thought had no future, had no purpose, had no value, Jesus turned her into the first missionary. And so... And so it's amazing. 
to see that Jesus makes this person who's been counted out, who no one believes in. But Jesus says, I, I believe in what you can do. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I, I believe that I can do something with your life.